Hey guys, it's Ravenhawk6910 reporting once again with the Ravenhawk Podcast, episode 29. And oh god, what a crazy roller coaster few weeks this has been. I should probably just start from the beginning because I've got a lot to talk about. Some good, not all negative, but. Oh boy, so I'm just going to come out and say it, I had to cancel my Lionel pre-orders from the 2021 Volume 1 catalog. Why? Simple. My car cracked a cylinder. Life threw me a major curveball with a major bill. So to the tune of over $2,600, that is now awaiting payment essentially so I had to make a decision that well I can either do this and keep the pre-orders and have a mountain of debt or I can cancel the pre-orders while the pre-order window is still open so that legacy station does not get stuck with my items and pay off the car repair in a more reasonable amount of time without having to worry about overcrowding myself with debt. More to the point, unnecessary debt. So, that was an easy decision to make. Well, relatively speaking, at least. So, yeah, it really sucks, because I'm not going to be able to get any of those items that I pre-ordered, but... At the end of the day, at least I have a little bit of peace of mind from it. That I don't have to worry about that burden on my chest. I mean, sure, I still have to worry about paying for my car repair in addition to the car payments. But, you know, sometimes life just sits on your head and gives you a bit of a reality check. And that's kind of what happened here. So, you know, it is what it is. I can't control life but I can control how I handle it. So, honestly, I've just... And, by the way, this all happened the week of my 28th birthday, so happy birthday to me. (laughs) So, but, you know, it... Shit happens. (laughs) You know, shit happens. And, honestly, I've just been kind of in slow motion at this point. Not really wanting to work on much because I've just kind of been blah at this point. And really, that's just the only way I know how to describe it. So, but I'm getting better, slowly but surely. Right now, I've just got to take life as it comes and just roll the dice. And I rolled a one. Crap. <laughs> Should have known better. But, you know, that's what's been going on with me, and that's why things have kind of slowed down on the channel a little bit. Now, I will say, uh, my two Canadian Pacific SD70A CEs finally came, and I love these things, the two CP military units. And I'm going to be working on a review of them very soon. I'm actually in the process of typing up the script, so I just haven't filmed any parts of that review. So expect that soon. The Polar Express by Polar has finally come home, as I'm sure you saw from that most recent short that I uploaded. And that thing's really cool. Only problem with that engine, it uh, apparently does not clear my bridge. The pantographs stand just too tall off of the thing, and therefore it gets taken off by the bridge. (laughs) So, it's a good thing that the pantographs come separately packaged with this locomotive, because... Otherwise, if this thing had been powered, I probably would have royally screwed this engine up. And that would have sucked. (laughs) So, small miracle on that. Also, the uh, two Cotton Belt, not Cotton Belt, Southern Pacific and Cotton Belt Bicentennial locomotives, the U25B and the SD45T-2. Now, Forgive me, my memory is really bad. I can't remember if I talked about this in a previous podcast or not. However, my friend Brian Cox sold me both of these models. 
And uh, these are really freaking cool. They're both MTH. Uh, the Cotton Belt SD45T-2 is a Protosound 2 model. And the U25B is a Protosound 3 model. Both with DCS. Now, the, I will be transparent and say that the speaker on the Cotton Belt unit is not working. So this thing does not have sound at the current time. But the U25B is perfectly fine. However, I'm going to review both of them in one video, uh, strictly because they're both bicentennial units from the same railroad, and I think it's really cool. Also, these are kind of personal favorites of mine for a few reasons. First of all, the Cotton Belt unit really is my number one favorite out of all three of SP's bicentennial locomotives. I just love the look of the SD45T-2. I love that L-shaped window. I love the SP light packaging on this thing. It's just really freaking cool. And when Brian gave me the opportunity to purchase both of these models from him, I actually got the Cotton Belt one first. Uh, and he was kind of holding on to the U25B, but I finally talked him out of that one. And the U25, the 6800, is actually important to me personally because... I have seen this specific model in person. And I don't just mean the model itself. I've seen this actual model in person, but I've actually seen the prototype in person as well. When I went to the Southern California Railway Museum back in 2020, um, one of the locomotives on display there is SPU25B number 3100. Well, 3100 started out life as the 6800 and it also wore the bicentennial scheme. Now, it's not in that scheme anymore. It's obviously just regular SP, but it was so cool to get to see that thing, and Brian actually brought this model to the museum when I met up with him out there and got a picture of it sitting on the back of the actual 3100. In fact, I've got a couple of pictures here that I'll include in the video here, and you can see there. But it's really cool. I like... I like when I get to do something like that where I have models of things that I've seen in real life. So that's why I'm kind of partial to this U25B. Not to mention, I think this is actually the very first U-boat in my collection. So, first time for that. That's really cool. So, O-scale stuff, that's basically all that's happening right now. Obviously, the GS1 review will be coming out sooner or later as well. However, I'm taking these models first and getting them done, so probably in the upload order, you'll see the SD70ACEs, the Bicentennials, the Bipolar, and then a couple of the HO models that I've been wanting to review recently. Now, before my car went in the shop, my plan was to go up to Cowan, Tennessee and film the uh, Savage Alberta Railway C39-8 that I got, the actual painted one, not the CSX patch job one, on the layout up there. But, obviously, I, did, I just didn't want to take the rental car up there and put all those miles on it, so I just used it for essential travel. The only exception to that being the other Saturday when I was out filming 630, the Spirit of the Union Pacific, and the Monongahela. So, I will have to worry about that another time, but I do want to review those two scale trains, C39-8s. I think that would be cool. And uh, I've also gotten a whole bunch of other HO models, because as I talked about on my Instagram a little bit, sort of a side project that I've been working on here as of late. And uh, I want to put this disclaimer out first really quick. No, I did not buy all of these HO models knowing that my car was in the shop. These all were purchased right before my car tore up on me. So if I'd have known that was going to happen, I probably would not have purchased these models. So don't think I'm, you know, oh, woe is me, pity party, and my car tore up, and oh, hey, check out all these trains I bought instead of paying for my car repair. No, that's not what happened. This is how it happened. And how it happened was my tax refund came in, and I used not all of it, but part of it to buy some of these models. But I digress. Instead, let's get into the models themselves. So the first ones, obviously when I got started getting some of these Canadian HO models, I got the C39-8s, and then I also picked up an Atlas C40-8W in Canadian national colors. Now this one 
is an X Illinois Central Blue Devil repaint. So it's in C in colors, but it started out life for Conrail at LMS. And it still actually has the marker lights in the nose, which is pretty cool. That I got from Trainmaster Models in Buford. No, actually, I'm sorry. They're not in Buford anymore. They're in Auburn. So, yeah, that was my first time going to the Auburn store. So, interesting, really. So, then, I uh, decided I wanted to look for some other models. So, I got myself a Scaletrains.com Operator Series BC Rail C44-9W. Now, this one I currently do not have on hand because I sent it off to my friend Carrie... And he's going to super detail and weather it because the Operator Dash 9 is very much a budget friendly model. So it's not, it doesn't have the road name and road number specific details like, say, a rivet counter model would. So Kerry's going to add the rock lights on the pilot. He's going to add the bell and a few of the other things. He's going to add the yellow CN safety stripe along the walkway. And then it'll look more like a modern BC Rail Dash 9 on Canadian National. And this thing also has DCC and ESU lock sound. Next up, two Bowser SD40-2Fs, one in Central Maine and Quebec, and another as a Central Maine and Quebec patch job, which is still in Canadian Pacific colors. Now these models, I've been a fan of Canadian cow locomotives for years. I love these things. Unfortunately, I've only seen the C40-8Ms and one SD60F in person. But I absolutely love the Central Maine in Quebec. I think it was a great railroad to rebuild the disastrous thing that was the Montreal Maine and Atlantic after the Lac Megantic crash. And they got several CP SD40-2Fs. Well now, CP has bought the Central Maine in Quebec, so now these are back under CP ownership. In fact, 9024, my red one right there, is actually now being used as a prototype for a hydrogen-powered locomotive. So this thing is going to be rebuilt with some new experimental technology in it. So that's kind of cool, really. But anyway, so I got these two. These both are DCC and ESU lock sound. And uh, if you notice on the CM and Q one, the actual painted one, uh, one of the windshield wipers is missing. Uh, I knew that going into the auction, so don't worry about that. But uh, but I got both of these engines, and they are pretty cool. I really like these things. And finally, the big ticket item. This is a BC Rail C40-8M from Overland Models. This is a brass model. And... Oh man, what can I say? This thing is cool. I like brass locomotives, but I don't buy a whole lot of them because obviously they're very expensive. I usually try to get one, maybe two brass trains a year, but it's just sort of a side project for me. But the BC Rail Dash 8s are probably one of my favorite Cal units ever made. Probably right up there with the Santa Fe FP45. But these things are so cool. They've got the rock lights and uh, the full width car body. They got the Draper taper, obviously. Now this thing is just straight DC. It does not have DCC. Eventually, I'll have someone put DCC and ESU lock sound in this thing. Uh, probably not going to worry about lighting because this thing comes with these little jewels in the headlight and ditch light castings. And I think I just like the look of those jewels because that's just how they did brass models back in the day. And I just think they look cool that way. So I'll probably just leave it as is. But definitely the pinnacle of my BC Rail fleet. You kind of really can't tell from the pictures here. But the side has yellowed just ever so slightly from age. But either way, either way, it still looks really cool. And definitely is probably the pride of my Canadian fleet. So that's it in terms of engines I've purchased. Now, I have pre-ordered some models from Scale Trains. Um, obviously, I talked about the SDL39. I've pre-ordered a Wabtec ET44AC and a Santa Fe SD40-2 Snoot Nose. Now, this one's probably going to be redone as a BNSF remote control unit. Kind of like the one that I saw in Birmingham, Alabama in this photograph right here. So that's what it'll look like in the end, but those aren't coming for quite some time. So... Now, the big thing that everyone's going to say, Oh, Raven is switching back to HO. No, I'm not. 
I still like my O scale stuff. And I have no reason to switch back to HO because there are reasons I left HO in the first place. But there are a lot of things in HO that I just can't get in O scale. That's just how it is. I may not like it, but it's how it is. So consider this a side quest. I am not abandoning O scale by any means, but I am going down this other road just for a little bit. And honestly, perhaps one day when I build my next layout, whenever that may be, I actually thought of this idea a long time ago when I was still getting into HO. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, O scale. But one thing I thought that would be kind of cool is to do like a O scale setup on the bottom and HO on the top. So that way you could get the best of both worlds. Just have two levels like that. But you know, that is what it is. And ultimately, that's just an as time and money allows project. But you know, one thing's for sure the HO is definitely a lot more budget friendly than O scale. So, so there you have it, and we'll just see where it goes from there. But that's really all I wanted to talk about today, guys, so I really appreciate you guys working with me as I've kind of been going through this funk. Let me tell you, depression and anxiety is a real son of a bitch. <laughs> um, I, w I really would not wish that on anybody, so... But it's not something I usually let get to me. I try my best, but sometimes my best just is not good enough. So, thank you guys for being patient with me while I work on stuff and have stuff in the backlog to upload. So, either way, that's all for now. Just wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about that. So, thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I will see you in the next video, the next podcast. And down the road, this is Ravenhawk6910, signing off.